Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Abundant Living with Karen on Storm Talk 365 Radio. The underlying purpose of this podcast is to help us all to share the good news of Jesus. Where there is hope for us, especially having a heart for the lost and the needy while we are struggling in a world of chaos. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Please be assured that during this 20-minute episode, I will not be lecturing down at you, I will not be preaching a sermon at you, but rather I'm sharing what I've learned and what I'm still learning in my journey and what's on my heart through experience and the Word of God. We learn together and I welcome you to share what you've learned. You can contact me at KarenJaneCasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Your testimony is important and someone does need to hear it. Let's start out by praying together. Dear Heavenly Father, because your loving kindness is better than life, our lips will praise you. You are our strength and refuge in times of trouble. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil because you are always with us. We are filled with gratitude and humility at the miracles that you've worked in our lives. We ask that you save, heal, and protect all of our loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, our community, our country, and we even pray for our enemies because we know with God all things are possible. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, help us in our life journey so we can be more and more like Jesus. Thank you for your unconditional love, compassion, and mercy. Your grace is through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Our episode title today is, What Can I Do? Well, before we get into it, I'll be sharing scripture references for your own study, so you might want to get a pen and paper ready just in case you want to jot it down. What can I do? We look around and we see all kinds of evil happening. People are being ugly with each other and some are deep into abuse, not knowing a way out. And some are depressed and heartbroken, lost. Others are in a tragic spot with their health and neediness for even the bare necessities. Others are very angry. This is happening all around us. We know that bad stuff happens to good people. There are trials and stressful situations, even to those of us who are believers, those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And you may know, well, you may be scratching your head and thinking, this is terrible, but what can I do? This problem, their circumstance is too great for me to help. Maybe somebody else might be able to help. Somebody else will tend to their needs. It should be somebody else's job, someone who is more qualified. But maybe that somebody should be you. Let me tell you a story. If you know my testimony, you know that I have spent most of my life in domestic violence. I experienced child abuse and then as an adult, even when at that point I could change my circumstance, I again allowed myself another person to abuse me, even to the point of being life-threatening. My darkest moment was when I turned my back on God. I had had another failed relationship and I quit church, then I quit with God, and I faced consequences. You know, we reap what we sow, but God, when I was deep in the pit of despair and desperation, I cried out to him and I turned to God for forgiveness of my sinful living and, and for turning my back on him. And I sought him for rescue in my time of trouble and for my salvation through Jesus. And the Lord did provide me a way of escape. As you can imagine, my recovery took several years. It was a process. And as I began to recover, my gratitude motivated me to strive to help others, especially in the same type of situation that my Heavenly Father had helped me, playing it forward. After all, isn't it that area 
that I had become somewhat of an expert at. I had already begun, I had already gone through boot camp, hadn't I? How could I know or even imagine that what the enemy had planned and used in many different ways throughout my life to steal from me, to kill me, and to destroy me would be the very thing that God would turn around and make for good. And not just for my good, but for good for others. To give me a calling, a purpose in this area, and that I would enjoy life, even enjoy life abundantly in it. I became a domestic violence advocate. It was tiny steps at first, tiny, tiny steps, maybe tiny to the onlooker, but it was huge and scary and yet therapeutic for me. With God's inspiration and his constant push, I wrote a story that was my way of sharing my testimony. Testimony that says, hey, look at this horrible, impossible mess that God brought me out of. He can do that for you. With God, all things are possible. My story was of overcoming challenges in life, overcoming a lifetime of child abuse and domestic violence. It was amazing grace. Even while I was still heartbroken and in the midst of recovery, and even while I was not sure I even wanted anyone to ever know my very personal and humiliating and painful things that had happened to me in my life. And in sharing this, people had to know about my sinful life. I had trusted no one, yet desperately needed the love of a man. I married several times, but there was failure and heartbreak in every relationship. But I obeyed God and I wrote, My Dear Rosa Jean by Karen Jane Casey. That was the first book I had authored. That was my first step, when while a baby Christian still struggling with heartbreak of my own, since then the Lord has shown me many other ways to reach to those who need to know God loves them. How many of us have a story to tell? We have inside us a testimony of how great our God is to tell others, to point out to what the Lord has done. And we know in our hearts that our testimony can help someone. What are we going to do about it? What is God whispering to you about it? There are many different ways to share and to bring hope to the world, to the lost. If you had asked me 10 years ago if I, what I dreamed about doing and that someday I'd be an author, a podcaster, a teacher, an advocate, I would not have been able to imagine it. God knows what our future holds. We just need to be willing. Verses like these encourage us to keep on doing good, keep on sharing the good news of Jesus, keep on helping those in need when we were where we were feeling and we feel God's prompting. Keep on praying. We are making a difference for the kingdom of God. We have the great commission to go and make disciples. We're instructed to share the good news of Jesus to the lost. We're to make fishers of men like Jesus did. What does Jesus tell us in Matthew 22, 37 through 39? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And who is our neighbor? Those people in need. Proverbs 3, 27. Do not withhold good from those in need when the power, the authority, is in your hand to help. But one might think, I'm not equipped to witness, to help, am I? I don't know what to do. Then we can pray to God to show us. He will. And in that regard, we can ask that he open doors for opportunity and close doors that are not where we should be. The scriptures tells us that God has specific plans for each and every one of us. And these plans were initiated even before we entered the womb. Each believer has a specific purpose, a calling, and that we were chosen for this. And in that, 
we are well able and well equipped to do it. As in Galatians 5, verse 22 through 23, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit has given this to us. And he deem, as he deems necessary, we're also equipped with spiritual gifts, such as preaching, teaching, healing, mercy, giving, service, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, discerning spirits, and so many more. We can, all, we can do all things, especially within our purpose and calling, through Christ who strengthens us. One might think, I do want to do something for others, to share with other people about Jesus, to share my testimony about overcoming, but right now I'm very busy, busy with a project or family problems, and the timing just doesn't seem right. Maybe tomorrow. But then, who among us knows how much time we have left? For me, I have wasted many years. I chose to be without God for a period of time. I was a baby Christian for many years. Now I'm 66 years old. How much time do I have left to serve the Lord? How much time do any of us have? There's an urgency in it. In Ecclesiastes, we see there is a time for every purpose under heaven. While we have a temporary stay on earth, this is our time to serve the Lord. Proverbs 11.30 in the Amplified Version, The fruit of the consistently righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures and wins souls for God. He gathers them for eternity. And in Proverbs 5.20, The one who has turned a sinner from the error of his ways will save that person's soul from death and covers a multitude of sins. That is, they obtain the pardon of many sins committed by the one who has been restored. Can you imagine that? If you're not yet doing and putting faith into action, when you ask the Lord, what can I do? And while you're waiting for a specific response, maybe you can take that first baby step of faith. Maybe you can start with your testimony. Testify to others about what God has done for you and, and that if he can do that for you, then he can do that for others. It might win a soul to Jesus. Well, I always like to encourage listeners to accept Jesus if they haven't done so, and I believe that it's a matter of life or death. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, Father but by me. We've all sinned and fallen short, but when we confess, like in Romans 10, 9, that God's Son suffered on the cross for our sins, and we believe in our heart that he arose from the dead, then we're saved. Whether you've accepted Jesus or not, let's pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, I know who you are. You are the only begotten Son of God, and I know what you did. You died on the cross for me, for my sins, and you arose from the dead. And Lord Jesus, I am hopeless without you. I'm a sinner. I ask you to please forgive me, and I repent of all my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If this is your first time to say this prayer and you said it believing in your heart, then you're saved. You're a believer. I encourage you to travel your Christian walk. And there will be trials along the way, but you can always turn to God for your strength and refuge. And he is always there for you. Follow Jesus in all you do. Study the word of God, obey him and praise him, and then enjoy the abundance in his calling and enjoy your purpose in life, even while in the midst of a distracting and chaotic world. 
The meek, the humble, shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I hope you enjoyed this episode today, and I pray that we all uh, will be encouraged and, and do better, be better equipped in our journey. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7, and also Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30. Both are Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. And you can simply Google the podcast by name to find them on the internet. Both are with Storm Talk 365 Radio. We're available on iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon. Hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. My website is KarenJaneCasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. I sincerely hope that you will give me suggestions and feedback. Contact me with your, to share your experience with this episode. And maybe you have a message for listeners on my podcast. On this episode, I mentioned My Dear Rosa Jean. For more information about this book and other books, go to my website or Amazon.com. Again, that's KarenJaneCasey.com. So before closing, I want to share with you about my favorite nonprofit, and that would be Yeshua's House, Y-E-S-H-U-A, the Hebrew name for Jesus. Yeshua's House is a 18-month safe haven for women and their children coming out of domestic violence and financial hardship. And as a domestic violence advocate, I've been on the board of directors for Yeshua's House for over three years, and I help facilitate some of the classes, support classes. Well, as I indicated earlier, Yeshua's House is nonprofit, so they depend on donations, and they are tax deductible. Uh, checks can be sent to Yeshua's House, Post Office Box 143, Petersburg, Virginia, 23804, or you can donate online at the website, that's yeshuashouse.net. The founder, Angela Brand, can be contacted directly at the email account, uh, yeshuashouse, the number two, refuge at gmail.com, or you can call her at 804-605-3841. My voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, I will direct my prayer to you and I will look up. Thank you and God bless.